Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in the Pathfinder Solutions series and I have brought forward two problems which are actually of the same subtopic from chapter three of the book and chapter four, it's about the conveyor belt and sand falling in and out of that particular belt which is inclined to the vertical. Okay, so let's try and see uh, one problem after another. We'll first start off with the chapter three objective type questions. Right. So here's a comprehension that is given as you could see on the top. And there are three questions following that comprehension, which are very conceptual and very important for your JE advanced and Olympiad situations. Okay, so you want to give it a try. Uh, try to pause the video here. I'll go ahead with the second question also so that you can take a snapshot. Give it a fair try, both the questions, and do come back to look at the concept and the solution that I'm going to provide. So here's the second question that is from chapter four build up your understanding problem number 39. A similar looking problem, only difference you could see that the sand is actually poured from the top, okay? So let's go with the formal wording of the first part, okay? A conveyor belt collects and transports it to a height H as shown in the figure. The sand falls on the belt with negligible speed at a constant rate mu, which is mass per unit time. The friction between the belt and the sand particles so high that the sand particles stop sliding almost instantaneously after they hit the belt. Acceleration due to gravity is G. So this is the diagram that he's describing. The sand is actually falling on it and it's supposed to immediately stop after coming in contact with it. So that's a question that is provided. So the three questions one after another, what should be the speed of the belt B, for the least possible driving force on the belts applied by the motor. Okay, so we'll start off with this question. Okay, right, so here's the question all over again so that we can have a track of what he's requiring us to do. And here's the diagram on the right top of your screen where you see the conveyor belt inclined and the height difference between the top and bottom is mentioned. So we expected to get your options in terms of that. Okay, so a lot of things are on the screen. Just follow my lead as I take you along with the solution. Okay, so you could see that this particular diagram contains a layer of sand on the top of the conveyor belt. So all this complicated diagram I have reduced on the left of the screen as you could see with red and blue color. Right. So the red part of layer, I will consider it as a sand and the blue one below it is the belt. Okay. So that should be pretty clear for you. And I would assume that the sand is actually falling onto the belt on this side and the sand trickles out from this side. So these are the representations for that. So on the belt, there is a driving force from the motor. Obviously that comes with this particular wheels in contact, as you could see that entire thing I have removed. And in the free body diagram, I have replaced it to the driving force in the upward direction called F. Now I would like you to understand that if I had drawn a free body diagram of this sand layer, what are the forces that are going to be there? Okay, so if we ask the sand, it would say that it is actually a body which is under steady motion. So the net force on that layer of sand should be zero. Okay, so how can that happen? If the entire weight of this layer in the downward component, right? So down the incline should be equal to the static friction force between the belt and the sand. Obviously that static friction force should act in the upward direction because otherwise the sand would have trickled down that thing. Okay, instead it's moving up. So the value of that static friction FS, indeed, if you ask the sand, it would tell you clearly that it is integration of all the DMG sine theta, which is down the incline. Okay, so that's the weight component of the sand. Now, what happens to the static friction, which acts on the sand in the upward direction? Now I go and draw a free body diagram of this blue colored belt that would act in the downward direction. So whatever static friction I got on sand upward will now act on this belt, Newton's third law, right? Equal and opposite in the downward direction. Apart from that, there is actually the sand which is uh, trickling in and out on the belt, right? It touches this ends of the belt. Now, the part where the sand actually goes out, it doesn't do so with any relative velocity, right? The belt and the sand going out will have the same velocity. Therefore, there won't be any reaction force at this place. Always the reaction force is related to the V relative of either entry or exit. And here, the at exit V relative is zero. So that's why I've not shown any force here due to the sand. 
Whereas at this particular place, if you clearly observe and carefully do that, the sand actually trickles with almost negligible velocity, but after touching the belt, immediately acquires upward velocity. So on the sand particles of length, let's say dm, the force would be in the upward direction, but you're drawing the free body diagram of the belt. The reaction of that sand, therefore, would be the same force in the downward direction. So what would be that? Each dm acquiring a velocity v in dt seconds will have an acceleration of v divided by dt and the force would be mass into acceleration. Acceleration is velocity acquired divided by the time duration for acquiring. Okay, so that's how we end up getting this simple looking expression of a reaction force, which is dm by dt into v. I repeat, there is a dm by dt into v because of the entry of the sand here, but there won't be any reaction force here because the v relative is zero. Okay, this v is v relative. So once you get this free body diagram, therefore, you would say on the belt, there is an upward F force, downward forces of this yellow color. Apart from that, you cut the belt at this particular place. Remember, the belt actually is frictionless and no, not the frictionless part. It is massless, is inertial as it is supposed to be. Therefore, the downward belt and the upward belt should carry the same tension at this particular place, right? So because there is no uh, friction between this particular thing and this thing, right? And also there is no mass of that particular belt. Even if friction exists, if this is massless, there should not be any difference in tension. So tension at the top, tension at the bottom, these two will cancel out in the FPD. So the only thing that needs to be balanced is these three forces, F and these two downward red colored forces, which I have written for the belt's equilibrium, okay? So it's moving, but it's having zero acceleration. So if I keep going ahead, trying to understand dm by dt is mu, that's what he's given in the question. Integral dmg sine theta, I have to manipulate in terms of the given parameters. So in order to forcibly get the dm by dt, I do a smart step here that I'll divide by dt here and multiply it with dt. And even in that, because I have to use this height h, I, uh, I do another smart step. This is the tricky part in the solution, okay? So if I multiply and divide by dl and bring this dt also down here, you could see that I've manipulated this quite a bit. So dl by dt is a v velocity with which this belt is moving, the length which uh, that is this, these things are changing. So that I can bring outside the integral. Not only that, dm by dt and g also are constants, which is mu into g, that also comes out. So this part and this part and this part come out, making it an integral sine theta into dl. What is integration of all dl sine thetas? Integration of all dl sine thetas is this height h. So that I can clearly write here. And therefore the expression for force becomes a simplistic looking function of velocity. That means if you're driving that particular motor with a certain velocity V, then the force required comes out to be a function of V in this manner. Now, because the question asked us, what is the minimum uh, velocity right, or not minimum velocity, he's asking for the speed for which the force is minimum, okay? So I need to minimize this function. There are two ways of minimizing such functions. One is the simple calculus that you can think of this as f of v, function of v, and then differentiate and do it. I'm not doing that because I want to teach you something and an alternative, okay? So I'm not saying uh, the method that I'm going to tell you is superior. It's just such an alternative way of looking at the maths of this question, right? Especially when these two are reciprocals of each other. We try to use AM greater than or equal to GM whenever the product of two numbers is a fixed value. You can see this product is fixed. Okay, so A plus B divided by two, if A and B are positive numbers, greater than or equal to root AB is a childhood inequality that you should know. Okay, so the minimum value of this occurs when this is greater than or equal to, this is A plus B, right? So two root AB, two goes on this side, gives you that the minimum value of the force is two mu root gh. And when does it occur? Am will be equal to gm is when this minimum equality occurs, right? So that is, these two terms should be simply equal to each other, right? And therefore, the occurrence of that minimum driving force happens when the velocity becomes root gh. And value of that minimum force is two mu root gh. Okay, so that takes us to the required answer, which is supposedly root gh. Okay, and that solves the second question too, right? The second question itself is the value of power delivered by the motor to the belt when the motor is applying least possible driving force. We already saw that the least possible driving force F minimum is 
two mu root gh from the previous page and the velocity at which it drives so is root gh so simple so the first question actually leads to the second question very simply and the answer therefore should be two mu gh third one is also a bit tricky let's move ahead what is the power dissipated by the sand belt system when the motor is applying least possible driving force there we have actually used a force equation to generate the value of the force now let's try to use the work energy theorem so since this power associated we'll try to use the differential form of work energy theorem which is dw all that is small change in the work done that is done by all forces should be small change in the kinetic energy of the system okay now i'm applying this to the belt plus sand system okay right so dw all can be converted to three types of work in this problem one is the external non-conservative and non-dissipative forces second one is the conservative forces of all kind and third one is the dissipative forces i repeat first one is non-dissipative but external second one is all forms of conservative forces and third one is the dissipative forces and i am writing it as dke i have written them in different colors so that you can follow properly Okay, and the next immediate step is to keep this dw external non-conservative on one side and divide it with the observation time of dt so that I can write the power. So one important thing you should understand is dw conservative is minus du. That is by definition, work done by conservative force is negative of change in potential energy. So I'll bring that one on this side and makes it a positive change in potential energy divided by dt okay and similarly dw dissipative creates the heat and therefore i bring it on this side and write it as rate of change of heat dissipated or rate of heat dissipation so that's the important part this red one this one and this green one is this and each one of these we already know except the heat because he's asked heat dissipated so this we have already solved as f into v in the previous problem as 2 mu gh and dke by dt is half dm by dt into v square dm by dt is mu v is given as root gh we know this one d mu du by dt is dm by dt into gh right it climbs a height h right and dm by dt is therefore mu so these three terms are known the missing part of the puzzle therefore is this question mark and then that question mark comes out to be an easy manipulation of mu gh by 2 so you calculated actually the heat dissipated or the power dissipated using an a backward understanding right so you calculated the entire works and then from that you manipulated what the required value of heat okay so the required answer should be equal to mu g h by 2 okay so that's the first three questions we'll try to move on to the chapter 4 question which is the build up your understanding 39 don't again give it a try just pause here give it a pause uh, fair try and then move forward okay so i'm reading it again a conveyor belt is inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal length of the straight portion is length l it's all same resistive forces in the belt mechanism are negligible radio of end cylinders are negligible as compared to the length l the sand falls on the belt with the negligible speed at a constant rate at the top and leaves at the bottom the friction between the belt and sand is high enough to stop sliding of sand particles almost in no time. Inertia of the belt mechanism is negligible as compared to that of total sand on it. Okay, all the information pretty clearly uh, presented. Find the study speed acquired by the belt in terms of the given quantities that is there in the question. Okay, so it's time sand is being poured on the top. There's no motor that is driving. The sand actually falls and trickles on it and therefore this thing, entire thing actually drives itself. That's the major difference between this problem and the previous one. Okay, so I think it's easier now with the first one explained already. So let's directly jump into the solution so this is the solution for that 39th problem build up your understanding so if sand is supplied at a steady state rate from the top you should be able to understand that the dm by dt that value that you would end up having the the value of the reaction force that is there should be equal to dm by dt into v and therefore that should be directly you can write it as mu into v Okay, so we have done that in the previous problem also. So this reaction force that is acting on this particular side should be in this direction acting, right? So dm by dt into v in this direction. And this 
force that is acting in this direction should be mg sin theta okay and hence the value of this mg sin theta should be equal to dm by dt into v itself and hence mu g into l into sin theta should be equal to mu into v square has been written at this particular place see this expression you can actually find it out using the same old logic in the previous problem let me write it in a better manner so this is dm into g into sin theta then the same old stuff that we did divided by dt and multiplied with, with dt here right and then do the same divide by dl multiplied it with dl so let me write it in a more elaborate manner so as to make you comfortable so this take it as dt here and then multiply it with dl okay right so dm by dt becomes mu here dl by dt is 1 by v so there will be 1 by v here at this particular place and integral dmg is l sin theta so this should be equal to mu times v okay right and this at this particular place will become this mu by v so i've tried to elaborate it in a much easier manner so that you don't get confused at this particular point okay so here you just try to manipulate it as integral dmg sin theta this manipulation is the most important part that you should acknowledge from the previous problem okay right i hope you enjoyed this particular solution and in case you want to try it out other uh, important series that are running in this particular channel i would urge you to go into the description below and try to see all the playlists that are running out and try to go through them in a particular loop or you can also check the playlists of the channel in which i have arranged these problems in a topic wise manner okay so in case you want all the gravitation problems at one particular place you can go to that particular sub topic and try to enjoy and enhance your subject okay so please do like the video in case you do so and share and subscribe to my channel and if, whenever you like uh, the youtube algorithm tries to press this video to more audience and therefore will increase the chances of the subscription and help me grow my channel also please do comment what you want me to take up uh, in this particular video i do consider the comments within one month of time i have this knack of picking up the comments and ensuring those things are taken up in this particular channel so until unless you comment i will not be able to know what you would require to be presented in my channel okay thank you and see you in the next video